In this lesson, we will extrude our layer's geometry so that our letters and swirls look 3D. Okay, so really quickly, I want to show you another step that we can take to make this a little bit easier to work with as far as using the ray tracing and having that slow down our computers. So let's come up here really quick to where we have our ray tracing options. And I'm going to turn my ray tracing quality back down to a 3. And really, you could leave that at whatever you wanted it to be because CS6 has a new feature called Fast Previews. And that's going to be located under this little button right here. So if I click that, it gives me a few different options. So the first one is Adaptive Resolution, which is basically what you see happening on my screen a lot. Anytime I move something around, um, stuff is going to get really blurry. And that's just because while I'm moving it, less pixels have to render. Now the next one is one of the ones I use the most and that's draft and that just gives me a lower quality render but it's great for times like this whenever we're in the preliminary stages just trying to get stuff figured out. There's also fast draft which is even a little bit less quality which later on we'll switch to fast draft once we have our extrusion set up and then there's wireframe where you're only going to see those outside edges. So you can toggle between those different views and figure out which one's right for you. If your computer's moving too slowly, you may want to downgrade it a little bit um, and just keep going down through the list. If you can't remember what each one stands for, just remember that the ones at the top are the best quality and the ones at the bottom are going to be the least amount of quality. Okay, so let's go ahead now and set up our extrusion for all of our layers. So obviously, our cameras and lights and nulls are not going to get any kind of extrusion. So I'll lock those back, but I do want to extrude the text, stroke, fill, and pretty much everything else besides the background. So I'm going to do this all at once just by selecting everything. So just come up here to the top, select that text stroke outlines, and then let's go all the way to the bottom and shift select the rest of these. And then I'm just going to drop any one of these down and take a look at my geometry options. This is where you're going to find the options for that extrusion. So you see our extrusion depth is right there, and that's going to be measured in pixels. So I'm going to be extruding mine to 90. Now this is going to be more pixels than I need, but it's going to intersect my background and you won't even be able to see how, how far back it goes. So some of those pixels will go through the background. Now something different is going to happen here in a moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and type this in and then we'll talk about what happens. So just go ahead and type in 90 for your extrusion depth for now. And we'll let that kind of catch up with us. And you'll notice that nothing changed. And the reason why is because when you extrude, the extrusion extrudes down or away from you into Z space. So right now, the reason why we can't see anything is because everything is sitting at zero. And so is our background. So right now, all that extrusion has gone through the background and is sticking out on the other side. So we need to push our background down so that we can see that space um, that has been created on the other side of all of our swirls. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to come down there all the way to the bottom. We'll unlock that background and just select your background and hit the P key to bring up its position. And now I'm going to push the background into Z space. So I extruded everything to 90. I'm going to push this this back to 80. So that's going to give me about 10 pixels of leeway between the extruded shapes and the position of my background. So go ahead and type an 80 in there. 80 positive, there's not going to be a negative. Positive is going to push you into Z space, um, like away from your camera, and a negative number is going to come towards you. So zero is just kind of that middle ground where everything's sitting right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click off of that just to enter that value in and it looks as if everything came up but what really happened is we pushed that background down and now everything is able to be seen so pretty interesting I really like the way that these swirls came out looks really good so now the next thing that we're going to be doing is adding just a little bit of a bevel to the edges. So adding a bevel is going to give you a more smooth edge than just a right angle. Now 
earlier when I was doing some testing, I had a bevel on all of my text. And when I sent that out to render, it really started to make some crazy stuff happen. And it seems like areas right here where you see this W gets really close together. Once a bevel has been added to that stroke, it doesn't play nicely. So I've also gone in and turned down the stroke on that text as well. So if you go in here and you take a look at any of these, that stroke, you want to turn that down to a one if yours is at a 1.5. So I would go through here and change all of those to a one that you see for the all the different groups within those text outlines. So including the issue with the bevel, also the stroke on your text, if it's at a 1.5, you want to turn that down. So also the bevel itself is going to be under those geometry options. And you see that right now it's set to a two, but the bevel style is none. Anytime your bevel style is none, you're not going to have a bevel. So let's just not worry about those two for now that we're not going to add a bevel to these, but all the rest of my layers, I do want to add that bevel to. So go ahead and select every layer that's been extruded besides your two text layers. So you can just shift select all of those. Then go into your geometry options, take a look at your bevel and we can bevel that to maybe just a one and then come up there and click that bevel style. And I'm going to choose the convex. Convex is going to look like a little hill and concave is going to look like maybe a little hole in the ground. If you can't remember the difference between those. Now the difference is extremely subtle and it's really hard to tell on this low of a quality render, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit and you might be able to see it here on the edge of this shape. It's just where that right angle would normally be made. You can see maybe just a little bit of a gleam there now. That is caused by the bevel. But don't add it to your text. It's probably just going to cause problems. So just be really careful and mindful of that. Make sure you're doing RAM previews, um, really low quality ones. If you want to add any kind of a bevel to your text, just to make sure that you're not getting any strange results that are going to show up in your final render.